The question needs to be asked first, was the reading of Isaiah 53 suppressed by the synagogue? Was the reading of Isaiah 53 suppressed by the synagogue? If uh, you're familiar with Torah liturgy in the synagogue, there were two different cycles. There was a cycle in the land of Israel, talking about a couple thousand years ago, that would finish reading through the Torah every three years. In Babylon, they would read through the Torah every year. So that has become the, the primary custom in Jewish synagogues. You read through the Torah once in a year. Then there are other passages from various sections, some of the historical books, but still called prophets, and some of the other prophetic books that are read called the Haftarah or Haftorah that supplement the reading of the Torah each week. There's a debate as to whether that was fixed in Yeshua's day. Many scholars say it was just getting fixed, but it was not fixed yet. Others say it was fixed. There's somewhat of a debate. And you have different traditions in different areas because it's not like you just had a universal thing that was done in all the ancient synagogues any more than you have that today. But when you go through the synagogue cycle and you're reading through the prophets, they don't read all the passages. It's just selections here, 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 here. But they read right up to Isaiah 52 this, and then start right after 54. In, without getting into detail, in certain parts of the ancient world, it seems clear that that was always the order. Perhaps even in the time of Yeshua or before. In other words, nobody was skipping anything. On the other hand, there are other traditions from the ancient world, from other synagogue cycles, that indicate it was originally part and then was cut out. It is not a decisive argument. Raphael Lowe, whose father was uh, a co-editor of a famous anthology of rabbinic literature, uh, wrote the Prolegomenon, this long introduction to a new edition of uh, a famous study from the 1800s that compiled all of the rabbinic commentaries on Isaiah 53. It's called Isaiah 53 according to the rabbinic commentaries and it was uh, one volume had all the original texts in the original language and the other volume had English translation. And then Raphael Lowe wrote the Prolegomenon, the long introduction, and he went through the whole evidence just as a, as a Jewish scholar and said you have two streams of evidence. One stream indicates it was never read in the synagogues, the other indicates it was read and then it was suppressed. So I've had anti-missionaries say there's no evidence, absolute, no, we didn't suppress it, we didn't stop reading it, we didn't get rid of it, never, we're not threatened by it. It's possible that's true. But it's also possible there is other evidence, and I, and I do not have the expertise of all of the, the uh, ancient manuscript evidence. Uh, I've not gone through it carefully to draw a conclusion that's not my specific field. So I just have to rely on other scholars. It's possible, or at least in another part of the ancient world, ancient Jewish world, that it was read in the synagogues and then was cut out because it was considered too controversial or it seemed like it pointed to Jesus.